in this video, I'm going to talk about the influence of touch sensory feedback on motor control. Um, so some motor skills are heavily dependent on touch. Um, so some motor skills require interaction with an object, person, or other features in the environment. And when we interact with other features in the environment or any kind of object or person, um, we are collecting touch sensory feedback that is going back to our control center. And then we make corrections to the movement and then send that back out to kind of hone our movement. Uh, so, so touch allows us to detect specific characteristics through tactile sensory receptors in our skin. So like, let's say you reach to pick up a glass off the table, that touch feedback is going to be really critical to the accurate execution of that movement um, because we need to be able to feel how slippery is the glass, how heavy is the glass. And those types of things we're getting through our mechanoreceptors through our touch. Um, so we're feeling pressure, skin stretch, joint movement, things that are involved in the execution of the movement and in our interaction with other features in the environment. Uh, so there are specific movement related characteristics that are affected significantly by tactile sensory information. Uh, so like movement accuracy. Um, so we are a lot less accurate in our movements when we don't have tactile feedback. And that's especially true when we look at movement of the fingertips. So like an example is if we anesthetize the fingers and then play piano. So although the motor skill might be there, you might be able to play piano and you might be highly skilled at playing piano, but when you don't have the tactile feedback of your fingers on the keys, then that significantly affects the accuracy of the key keys and, and the rhythm and everything. Uh, movement consistency. So if we compare uh, the motor skill from trial to trial, um, if we don't have that tactile feedback, so again, if we look at like anesthetized fingers typing on a keyboard, um, then we are inconsistent from one trial to the next. Uh, movement timing. So movement timing is especially influenced by tactile feedback. Um, and that's especially true in rhythmic movements where we have intermittent contact with the environment. So think about like juggling or locomotion, meaning walking or running, where you have intermittent contact between your feet and the ground. Um, so timing of movements, especially where we have intermittent contact, um, is especially affected um, when we don't have tactile sensory information. Uh, movement force adjustments. This is like the example with lifting a glass off the table, a glass of water from the table. Uh, we adjust for the amount of force that we apply in our movement um, based on that tactile feedback that is coming from the fingers when we lift that glass. So we don't know how hard to squeeze the glass um, and with how much force we need to, you know, for elbow flexion or whatever it is that the movement is, we have a hard time estimating the force that's required if we don't have tactile feedback about the movement and the object that we're interacting with. And then finally, estimating movement distance. Um, there's a difference, like let's say I'm gonna point at something. There's a difference between reaching to touch the thing or reaching close to it and pointing at the thing. We are more accurate when we touch the object that we're pointing at compared to when we are just pointing at it without touching. Um, so something about that touch at the end of the movement causes us to be more accurate in estimating the distance of that movement. All right, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.